So welcome back. This is part two in my series with George Michael called Faith and Freedom. And um, yeah, so I don't want to take too much time to introduce him because I've done that in the last video. This is more of an opportunity to pick up where we left off and then to wrap up the interview because there's still quite a few questions that I have um, and then some that kind of some new ones that came in um, throughout, throughout the day uh, today. And I've definitely been feeling his energy around. He's been making his presence known to me in many different ways, so confirming um, our connection and his readiness to um, step forward again. And I already hear him talking because I invited him in and he's like, yeah, we don't have to play, pretend like we don't know. I'm already here, he's saying and laughing. Um, he was starting to talk about where we left off yesterday. So I just want to hear what, what, were you, what were you saying, George? He's saying, well, it just felt, you know, we left off on a, on a sort of a melancholy note um, and... Uh, that was was planned or intended um, as a good as a good wrap up point for me in that interview. He's saying I knew we were going to touch on these things, or I knew I would share some of these experiences that would, you know, cause me to to reflect a little bit or fall into that like reflection mode, looking back mode. And there is some somberness there, some melancholy there. Um, through, through some of the time periods in my life, but uh, don't let the sun go down on me. It was just a message to, uh, don't forget about me. Um, I'm in heaven. I'm fine. I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. I'm ecstatic to be here. I'm ecstatic to be asked to um, be in your presence again as, as George Michael. And um, in Freddie's words, the show must go on, and he's kind of nodding to Freddie, who's just kind of standing in the background. Um, he's saying they came in as a trio, and that's him, Freddie, and Princess Diana is is there too, and um, he's nodding to this being a good time to, to talk about that, because that was one of the questions uh, I was going to ask, and I kind of felt um, that she was around. So. Uh, but I've never connected with her directly before, so this is my first time, and she's she's kind of waving to me, and 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 she's like saying, "What? Are you? It's a it's like it's a pleasure to meet you." Basically, it's um, I'm hearing the word gracious, so she's very gracious and elegant in her demeanor, but um, she's kind of like the like smiling and like laughing, but like also kind of gently um, backing up uh, and just saying that she's here for, for George's support um, as one of his, his best friends on the other side. Um, they didn't get to know each other as well. Is that, well, they didn't know each other as well as they know each other now, she's saying, but um, basically they're, they're very lifelong friends and they're kindred spirits. And um, they're referencing Amanda Ellis's work because she's um, channeled both of them. And uh, Princess Diana is saying that she's really the reason why George chose to step forward as a spirit guide. And they're kind of giving me the okay to talk about that as well. Um, and, and to invite her in any time as well. She would, she would love to talk to me sometime over tea, over a cup of tea, she's saying. Very sweet. Um, I might take you up on that offer, Princess Diana. Um, yes, so getting back to George, they're saying, um, yeah, where were we going with that, George, or where were you wanting to go with that? Yeah, just wanting to, oh, he's saying, okay, because I, I I forgot what, I just got uh, mesmerized by Princess Diana saying that she wanted to uh, talk, or she would have a cup of tea with me, so I was like, oh, <laughs> Uh, but I forgot where they were trying to guide me in, in the direction, but they're talking about spirit guides and how spirit guides help and how George um, serves as a spirit guide for us as light workers. Um, that's a question I asked Freddie. Uh, some of these are going to be similar questions that I've asked Freddie because I think it's fun to 
since I'm going since I'm going to be interviewing um, more guides like this, it'll be fun to hear each guide's like different uh, response to, to some of the same questions. So they're highlighting, um, <clears throat> yes. How do you how do you work as a spirit guide? Um, how do you serve as a spirit guide? How many people are you working with um, in comparison to Freddie? Because Freddie works with many people. He's very uh, like extroverted and outgoing and, and quick to to come in and step forward for people I, f I hear and feel. Um, and how would you describe yourself in, in, as a guide? And do you even want to be a guide uh, that, that uh, we can call on as light workers? And he's like, sure. Sure, you can you can feel free. Anyone can feel free to call on me in times of trouble. And he's referencing um, the John Lennon, or is it? No, uh, it's the Beatles. I don't think it's John Lennon. It's just um, in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, seeking words of wisdom. Let it be. Um, let it be is the song. Thank you for playing that in my head. Um, it's like he'll come in in, in in times when you're when you're losing faith, when you feel troubled, um, when your conscious conscience is troubled. He's showing to help, like Mother Mary would, to help heal that, to help like give you this feeling of self compassion and self love, or or like that nurturing feeling, that kind of motherly energy. He's saying he really does have a softer side and. Diana really brings that out in him, and um, she's kind of that motherly energy as well, and she really embodies that that Mother Mary quality that he loves so much about her and um, women. Um, he's very tuned to the energy of Mother Mary and Jesus, um, and he's referring to the word Savior, so there's something he wants me to talk, and, and faith um, that's relevant to um, a message that he wants to talk about because <clears throat> I was getting this download and I wrote it down. He's saying, he's showing me on the piece of paper what he wants to talk about. So he has a song and it's called Jesus to a Child and it's a very touching song and it's, um, he wrote it after his lover on, on Samuel died and it was, it was for on Samuel. So it was really his song for, for him. And, and describes like their connection and he basically viewed Ensemble as like a savior to him and a bringer of light and truth and um, how would you what would you like to share I felt like he wanted to share something about because I was hearing him say redemption um, yeah this this interview for him is, is, is kind of seeking redemption uh, his name um, kind of reclaiming his power back and his name, and that's why he's stepping forward in this way with me and Amanda to so the fans can um, learn how to relate to him on a deeper way, like the truer, truer um, sense of who he was. Because in the last part of the interview, he talked a lot about how he just felt um, beat up by the world and um, misjudged and. Um, like people didn't really see the true or really see him for who he was and he didn't fully see himself either that way. Um, so he's wanting um, to just put a lot of like Mother Mary type healing energy on the world and um, on the broken hearted people, the people that are feeling lost and confused and disconnected from source and from their power and who they are. So he's wanting to give the power back to the people is what he's saying, the freedom um, to love again, uh, love oneself again, back to the people. There's no need for this self-hate, no need for this um, like downer, looking down on yourself, self-judgment, self-criticism. He's wanting you to put that all aside and learn how to love yourselves again as God loves you, as Ansamo loved him because that's what he really meant was it was an unconditional love is what he's showing and, and that's what he experienced with his twin flame Ansamo who passed away um, from AIDS uh, you know unexpectedly or it was just it cut their relationship short so they only really had two years together but it was 
George is saying, the most meaningful two years of his life. It was the highlight of his life. It was everything he lived for. And um, those two years with Anselmo was, was the most beautiful uh, part of his life. And um, he would never regret it. He would never regret his life because of the beauty uh, that Anselmo opened up for him to see within. So he really did have that true heart connection with him. And he's having me look at the paper again. Oh, because he's reminding me when I, he talks about Anselmo being his savior, what he actually realized realizes now from where he's at, his perspective now, and wants people to know is that you are the savior unto yourself. So the savior, savior he's kind of starting to talk about um, don't look outside yourself for somebody else to save you. And he's highlighting, he's kind of going back to politics now and talking about like Donald Trump and um, really any president or politician. Um, he, he really wants to get the idea across that there's nobody outside of yourself that can truly save you. Only you can save you in your own belief of your power and your connection to God, that you are God's child. So like Jesus to a child and um, you are Jesus, you are the love, you are God's son and um, ex firstborn expression and a divine expression of source. And uh, you need to treat yourself that way. He's saying you need to love yourself that way. That's a deeper love that you that you can embody, embrace and heal that mother wound, heal that wound of, um, or father wound or mother wound, um, that wound of separation from self, separation from source, and the mother who loves you, and he's kind of referencing Mother Earth because I just did a video not too long ago about that. Um, the mother wound is really the wound of separation from our true selves, and we're being called to Remember who we are as light workers, and so he's saying, "Yes, if you need to call on me for that purpose, call on me." And he's saying, "You got to have faith." He keeps putting that song in my head. That seems to be a major theme, or song, or way that he kind of expresses him himself, or kind of comes to the rescue. Um, he's saying, "Don't expect anyone to rescue you, but call call for help, call for backup. You know, don't don't." do it alone. Don't feel like you have to do it alone. There's a soul tribe here. There's there's spirit guides on the other side that have been where you are. Um, we have been where you are. Freddie and I and Princess Diana, we have been where you are and we know your truth. We see your truth. We see who you are from this higher perspective. So call on us. Call on us anytime that you feel um, in despair and, you know, and um, not worthy enough of God's love. There's nothing you can do to, um, he's saying, there's no, there's no perceived mistakes you can make that would separate you from God's love or the love of, of the mother. And he's highlighting Mother Mary. So that's, um, he's kind of pointing to Princess Diana. She's, she's the mother love and he's saying, and Queen is the mother love. He's referencing Freddie again. Uh, kind of in a half joking way, but in also in a serious way because Queen Freddie, Freddie's last song uh, that he sung when he before he passed, um, the last lyric he sang in the studio, the last performance he made was to a song called Mother Love that was mostly written by Brian May, but also partly written by Freddie, I think. Um, no, I think it was, was it Mo Brian? He's like, I, I helped out a bit, but you know, it was, it was Brian because he was really too weak. Um, he was really dying at that, at that time. It was like literally in his final, it was his final countdown. He was saying, Freddie was saying, so it was, it was last will, um, to write this song with Brian and it took all of his power to, and strength to do it, to finish it. And he just couldn't finish the last line in the song Freddie's saying, which is, um, Brian, um, had, he said he would come back to finish the last line. He was just too tired for the day, couldn't, didn't have the strength, so he went home. 
and Brian finished the last long, line of the song. So look up Mother Love. It's a very touching song. It, it kind of says a lot about uh, what happens when we die. It's very relevant to um, his feeling of passing away and, and, and how um, he was going back to the mother. And he was um, going to have the mother welcome him back home, going back home. And wow, I'm getting a lot of vibration. It's just very sweet and touching. And George is kind of putting his arm around Freddie right now. And, you know, I love you, brothers, is what he's saying. But but um, he's also kind of insinuating that, you know, like these three these three uh, guides, Princess Diana and, and Freddie and, and George, all knew each other in, in real life. And... Um, Princess Diana, it's like, don't get me wrong, like, we, we, we have this sweet, we have the sweet act, but, but, um, they have, like, this, um, deviousness about them, they, when they get together, they're really funny, and, um, they, um, joke around a lot, and there's some stories about Princess Diana and Freddie we won't get into right now that are true, but, um, we'll just, let's stick with the topic now, and George is like, I, I, t I told you I wanted to have a good time, and I meant it. Uh, when he first started this interview yesterday, he said that was what he wanted, um, how he wanted it to go. He said he wanted, let's just have a good time. And um, so he's ha just kind of saying, I'm having a good time. We're having a good laugh. We're all here together. We're all buddies and we're all friends here in heaven. And that's, he's drawing my eyes to who are you hanging out with in heaven? Because that was one of my questions. Um, so he's like, now you don't even have to ask because you know. He's saying it's not just Freddie, though, and Princess Diana. I'm hanging out with, you know, other singers and artists, and um, but my family. He's saying mostly my family. That's that's who I'm the closest to. And he's um, he's like obviously you know my sister passed away um, in your time, 2018, which was um, no 19. He's correcting me. Sorry, I got it wrong. Um, yeah. Three years after he died, his sister, who he was very close to, um, he had two sisters. One of them is still alive. I, I think so, right? One of them? I believe so. And he's saying yes. Um, but his, his one sister, I think it was his younger sister, uh, who he was close to both of them, but he was very close to her, especially, I believe, um, she ended up passing away exactly three years to the day that George Michael passed away. So he passed away um, on Christmas Day, December 25th, 2016, and she passed away, unfortunately, on Christmas Day, 2019. So he's just saying, you know, she's happy here in heaven. She's, she's doing well and healing and recovering, and um, we just had a very close connection. And um, that was just something that, like our life paths or were meant to have that experience or um, there's just like overlapping patterns and themes that they were both kind of uh, here to learn. He's showing us almost as if like they were twins in a sense, not like twin flames, but, but they mirrored each other, um, their experiences, their human experiences and um, just like the feeling of lost and yeah, that really was hard for her to get over his loss, um, just as it was hard for him to get over the loss of his lover. So there was a lot of similarities and lessons and things like that. Um, but the sense is like, we don't need to go into all of that, and it's not really relevant to, to his story and what he wants to share today. So, um, so yeah, and he's with his mother too, is what he was showing, who he was very close to. Oh, and his lover. Oh, yes. How could I forget? Ensemble. He's like, yes, he's with me all the time. He's showing now that they're like, he's hugging him. And he's got, George has his arm around Ensemble's waist. And they're just, you know, together, very happy, very happy. He's quiet. He's saying he's quiet. Um, he's being quiet, Ensemble. Sorry. His name is a little bit difficult for me. It's Bra Brazilian, so I'm not, maybe not pr pronouncing it so well, but... George is saying, that's okay, it's it's not important, uh, really. Um, all right, so we're, I'm looking at what I wrote down. Um, so 
freedom and faith. There seems to be a theme, faith and freedom, freedom and faith. Um, freedom within and without is kind of that song he was bringing up to me. What would you like to share about faith? Because I noticed with me, you come in a lot with the song, you got to have faith and um, you've come in with guidance for other, other people with that song. And it seems to be one of your favorite songs to lift people up along with uh, Wake you Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, the Wham song. That's a uh, that one came on for me and the radio, like on my way to doing this interview. I was listening while I was driving, um, but I had the, the radio off. I was listening as I was driving um, to this pre-recorded, uh, to, to the part one, um, so that I could just remember what we talked about and where we left off. And, and if there was any questions that came, would come up that I wanted to, to make sure I asked him, and the song, I just, my eyes, I'm listening to the interview, and it was at the part where um, he was talking about, like, how I see him. And, and we were talking about he looked like the kid with the wham hair, like, in, in when he was in wham. And um, with the hair and the hairspray, was, we were talking about, like, how he had me get out the hairspray or whatever. And I literally, like, got guided to look at the radio and it shows on my screen what's playing and, and what the band is. Even if the music is not up, the radio was obviously on. And I look and it says, wham, wake me up before you go, go. So <laughs> clear sign, clear confirmation. George was ready. He was there. He was watching me do that. And he thought that would be hilarious. So he does, he's a little bit of like, a, not a trickster wouldn't be the word, but, um, or would it? Because I have a little trickster ener energy in me. I have a little sly energy in me. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a good laugh, he's saying. Just having a good laugh. It's just the perfect moment to kind of throw that song in there, especially that one. Because he also knows I love that song. I, I didn't mention it in my last video, but, you know, there's probably like four songs I really love. And I talked that one. Uh, I mentioned three in the last video, and that that's the other one. Always puts me in a good mood. So definitely lifts all of our vibrations. Um, okay, so back to the faith and freedom. Is there anything else you want to talk about with faith and just having faith? Um, it, t it came up, he's saying, in the, in the last uh, video, his message for us in the times that we're living in. Um, it's really about having faith and knowing your power. And, and taking your sovereignty uh, to the next level. He's saying um, you got to up your sovereignty, your feeling of empowerment, your remembrance of who you are and what you came to, to do and, and serve as missionaries of light, he's saying. So remember your galactic roots. Um, he's showing his Pleiadian roots. And um, tap into that potential. Tap into that higher dimensional potential. And he's saying Metatron will help you with that. Um, as he has helped me and Freddie and, and Diana, and he will help all of you as well. Um, connect to that higher guidance system uh, that is always around you. And I feel like him leading me to, to one of my questions, um, which is... I'm sorry, I, I got caught up in looking at something else, which I, is also probably one I'm supposed to ask. Um, yeah, I didn't actually write this one down. It was, I was going to, um, it is about how to expand our intuitive gifts. Do you have us as mediums learning <clears throat> mediumship, students of mediumship and channeling? Um, do you have any advice on how we can open up our intuitive abilities? He's like, just tune into yourself. And, and he's also saying, and your higher self, just having that higher awareness of who you are expands your capacity to tap into that infinite potential, that creator potential, and to channel that energy through. Um, so whoever wants to come through will be drawn to your light and you will find it easier to connect. So opening your heart also so he's saying, listen to music that opens your heart and feeds your soul. 
mean, he's very big on music, so he's showing that that's how he would do it. He would kind of start by, you know, listening to music that like inspired him creatively, and then he would go off and um, kind of write his own his own lyrical content and and music. But it's really the sound of your heart singing is, I mean, it's just, there's a, there's a melody. There's a, there's in any moment in time, there's an undercurrent. There's a melody that plays. He's saying in a, in a human experience, emotional experience. So he's saying, um, tune to the emotion of the guy, get the feeling first of what wants to be said and, and what wants to be channeled. And then channel that, you know, practice tuning in more and more and more. He's showing like a radial dial, like just fine tuning, fine tuning. But he's saying there's many ways to channel. There's many ways to channel. There's many ways to experience life. You're all gifted. Um, it's just knowing your gifts is really the most powerful thing. You know, when you start to know who you are and remember who you are, you, you, automatically align with those those hidden talents and abilities and you know who you connect easy to and you know who wants to connect with you um, which guides want to connect with you he's like Metatron this is really his business he's saying so maybe I'm not explaining it that well he's saying or in a way that you can um, but he wants you to feel into it feel into his words um, he's not explaining it exactly how Metatron explained, explains it, or how Metatron has explained it to him, how channeling works as, as a medium, really, um, but he can kind of see as a guide um, how to help people like tap into their true talent. So is that something that you help us with? Um, yes, I do. I, I do have the ability to help you learn who you are and tune into your your true self your higher nature that's something i'm working on still um in 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 heaven as a guide i'm still expanding in in my mastery or ability to do that that's why i i want to come back to kind of relive to 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 have another chance at um at glory he's saying to have another chance at at a win um, he's wanting to just express himself again and, and fine-tune that relationship while on earth to his higher self. So he's showing that's kind of just all channeling is. It's tuning to your higher self and being able to receive the, the wisdom that, that's, that's wanting to flow through. So um, he's referencing terms that Metatron would use, but that's his best way to describe it, he's saying. So hopefully you get that or that makes sense, he's saying but he feels like that's enough on that topic. Um, okay, so I feel like we've, we've covered a lot of ground here, um, but there's a sense like there's something I'm missing. So, oh, how do you work with Metatron? That was the question. Um, okay, he keeps drawing my awareness down to this one. So that'll be the next question. Um, I don't know if I asked you this. How many people are you working with um, in the light in the light worker community or just in general? Well, he said I'm working with the people I still love and that love me. So he's talking about close friends and, and family. He's serving as a guide and protector for them. He's showing that he works he's working with Archangel Michael primarily in in um, heaven. Not so much as like a guide for people, but the feeling is like he's working side by side with Archangel Michael. He's accompanying Archangel Michael on, um, it, it's helping opening up the pathway to freedom. So just bringing um, in areas where there's a fight for freedom, he's alongside Archangel Michael as kind of like a, is backup the word you're trying to use? Support, he's saying. It, apprentice kind of um, that's also the feeling it's like he's learning a lot by 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 hanging out with Archangel Michael and kind of watching um, how Archangel Michael helps people um, it's like he's a mentor to George 
in a way, and they share that name in common, Michael. <laughs> and that was a chosen name. That, that was not George's real last name. Um, I can't pronounce his real last name. He's Greek. I think it starts with a P. Um, but he's telling me that his nickname was Yog, and I don't even know what that means. But um, um, I'm hearing the word misfit, though, so I don't know if that's in reference to Yog or if there's even any connotation there um, or relation or if that's just when how he was when he got that name so I don't I don't know I, I don't want to get off track though George so let's stay stay uh, on on schedule I asked him to stay on schedule <laughs> so I don't have to rush out of here because uh, I'm on a time limit here um, so he's laughing he's like of course I'm gonna keep you on schedule you know I'm not I'm not that like rude or um, difficult and he's kind of referencing like as a as a diva would be or someone might imagine like a celebrity to be just kind of only on their own schedule only caring about their own things he's he's like i got you you gotta have faith well thank you george i i do i i am trusting our connection more so i am trusting you more so that's very nice he's like and freddie mercury is here he's like so what's not to trust you know about this this connection we're all sharing in this moment and it feels like they're having a good laugh and I don't know if it's relevant to to this interview but I just feel like they're goofing around like as they're talking to me there's like stuff happening in the background that they're just like inside jokes or something it's like hanging out with a group of people that like know each other and like they got their own thing going on they're they're here but they're like not fully here they got they're they're having their own discussions behind the scenes um okay what this is the question I said I would ask next. How do you work with Metatron? I did pull cards for this. Um, so I'm going to pull these out. That's what I'm being guided to do. And we'll go through these very quickly. So these are the cards I pulled from Metatron's deck. And I asked, how are you working with Metatron? <clears throat> and the first card I got was number 10, New Dawn, Welcome Back. How does this relate, George? Well, first, Metatron was there to welcome me back home. He was part of the welcoming crew, as far as angels go. Um, he's an important guide for many souls who cross over the Rainbow Bridge. Um, but a new dawn, he's throwing my word to that, or awareness to that. A new dawn, a new day, a new way of living, a new way to express yourself and express your truth. Um, that's really what his message is all about as well. It's just like new beginnings. Um, welcome back. He's saying welcome back and it says welcome back on the, on the card. He's saying a welcome back home as light workers. He's saying um, on earth. It, it, it's like finding your home pathway back to source. So Metatron is working in that in that way. Um, he works with spirits and helps them guide them home, but he's also um, kind of mentored by, by Metatron to um, be able to eventually heal all of his wounded, wounded parts or collect all of his lost parts so that he can um, feel at home and so um, he can better help people as a, as a guide. Uh, on the other side to to feel at home with them with their self with their true self so I hope I'm getting that right George um, he's like yes you're getting that right it will make sense to you uh, when you watch it and I'm like okay just trusting your judgment because sometimes I don't really know what they're where they're going with things um, okay so He's like the light worker mission is is to essentially being you're being called home in a in a in a sense while you're on earth you're being called to remember your home but you're being called to like anchor that that memory into your your physical or to express that through your physical through your your soul's expression. He's like Metatron had to help me out with that one. <laughs> I was like okay and me. <laughs> I mean help me out with that one. So thanks Metatron. Um Okay, so this is the other way. He said he was helping, uh, work, working with Metatron. 
Number 52, priorities, building blocks for life. Um, so he's, he's taking me to the picture. He's like stability, family relationships. Um, the priorities in life, helping you to, to recognize that um, is one way he works with Metatron. Um, like Meta, it, it sounds like Metatron is helping him in this way and remember these um, this way. It's like he's helping him with like his angel wings, his golden light, um, the rainbow, the, the pyramid, which is a symbol of strength and stability. Um, but it feels like this is like family ties with George, like there's some healing there um, and some light work needed on the planet around that too. Um, healing in the family unit I'm hearing so I feel like it's it's all of these messages are somehow like how Metatron is helping George but also how Metatron is is working with us the sense is not like George is necessarily helping Metatron work um, do this for us it's more just like this is part of the mission the, the greater path of healing for him and the collective and this last one, how do you work with Metatron? And the message was, 42, go with the flow, paddle on. He's saying, I'm learning how to go with the flow. And that's why in the beginning, the first part of this interview, in the very, very beginning, he, he made it very clear he just wanted to go with the flow and allow it to kind of just naturally take him where, or take the interview in the direction it wanted to go. And he likes my style about that. So he feels like he resonates with me, and he's showing that we're both water signs. And he's also um, reminding me by bringing that up. I'm a Pisces, by the way, so I'm a fish. So water, very comfortable in it. He's a Cancer. He's a crab. A um, bit, bit more moody, I think, at times. Um, he said it's not – crabs don't have as easy of a time going with the flow like Cancers don't. He's, he's saying – as Pisces because um, they're a cardinal sign, which cardinal signs in astrology are like fixed. They're very fixed in their ways. They're very stubborn. Um, I have a, a friend, close friend who's a Cancer and I can attest to that. Um, they just they just have their ways um, that are just very, they, they're slow to change, he's saying, um, stubborn, stubborn to change. It's like, you know, they like it the way they like it and that's how they, they get comfortable in how they wanna be and present themselves and um, they can can sometimes also get very stuck. So George, that's what this whole thing reminded me of, this this card you bring up with the water sign and the a cancer. I've noticed you've talked about cancers a lot, <laughs> a lot more, like you refer to your astrological sign a lot more than like Freddie would, for example, but um, just, just more than I would hear like a guide reference that. It, it feels to me like you're very proud of that sign and, and representation of yourself he's like yes I am just as just as like I was I was proud um, of, of my sexuality too like it's a proud to be a gay man too is what he was saying um, but then I was questioning that because I in my mind I thought maybe he didn't like labels he's like well I didn't I don't like labels he's like I don't like that part of the culture uh, the need to to put labels on everything and to segregate and separate and divide it's just it's just the opposite of unity he's saying and it just doesn't resonate with him it doesn't resonate with with how he sees uh, men and women and he's a lot like Freddie in that way um, you know they both don't agree with with the idea of, of putting too many labels on, on anything it's just like this it's not a full representation of a human being they're more than just their sexuality um, there's more to a person than just their sexuality and who they who they're interested in at any given moment because it's it could change. He's like everything is always changing and and he's going back to the card. Going with the flow is really um, being open to change and being able to shift in a moment's notice and go the the direction that the wind is going that that uh, that that the river wants to take you. He's like if you get um, stuck in one place too long the water starts to pool up. If you get stuck in an area where, you know, the water is not, you're not going with the water, you kind of get pulled behind, stuck behind a rock or you, a pool of water, it gets stagnant and it starts to um, decay and, um, you know, have, have growth 
in it, different types, like, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say, I think I'm getting a little bit tired, but um, that's, that's what he meant, he just said, just getting stuck and stagnant, the energy wants to flow, it wants to move, so you just have to be open to change and, and shifting new perspectives, and your way of seeing the world needs to be open and non-judgmental of what others are choosing to do, so that's also an important message that he has to share. And I feel like we're going to wrap it up uh, soon because I am running out of time. So that that was going to be my que one of my questions. Um, oh, back to the crab. He's reminding me, don't forget to tell them this. Um, yeah, so in part one, I talked about the symbols. He, he said um, that if you see in the physical, you could know that his energy was around you. And one of those... Um, no, actually not one of those. It wasn't until after that I filmed that, that I had this experience where, um, or I just didn't have a chance to mention, I actually had, had this experience when I, the day I filmed that same message, but that was what I picked up on when I channeled him without, um, I channeled him first through writing and he gave me that information what the symbols were and then when I before I actually did the video I was asking for signs of confirmation that he was around and he was ready to do the interview with me and he literally drew my attention to um, the crab there was a crab in the car in front of uh, the car in front of me through like a, a drive through line when I go to get my coffee um, had a bumper sticker and it was a very clear it was like a crab it looked just like the cancer sign and I saw that and then I looked up in the night in the next instant I, I knew it was it was a sign from George um, and then I looked up in the next instant I as I looked up I saw my eyes went on a, a actual hummingbird that was flying around and kind of flying and that really got my attention and so I thought well maybe hummingbirds is another because I had seen a hummingbird like two days before and I thought well that's the second hummingbird I've seen in two days since George has been around, maybe that symbol associate, associated with him. So I wanted to ask him if that was a sign. And he's saying, yes, it was a sign for me. It was just my way of getting your attention to let you know that I was around. Um, it is kind of a symbol of freedom in some ways. Um, there, there's some meaning there because that's what I was thinking of. But um, it was more just like a sign to let you know I'm there because spirit... Uh, comes through a lot through hummingbirds. Um, the presence of hummingbirds, similar to the presence of butterflies, rec um, is, is can be recognition that someone in spirit is around you. But if you want to assign that meaning to me, like as a hummingbird, you can. It's more your choice. Um, and he's talking to me, but I feel like he's he's saying that to anyone that wants to call on him. So is it... Um, sorry... Is it okay if we call on you uh, as, as a guide? Just, just to be clear, because sometimes I feel like it, it's not always clear. Um, with George, I feel like there's, he's not as like out there as Freddie is. <laughs> he's like, yes, yes, I, I, I made it clear. It is okay, you know, or if you need me to make it clear, it's okay um, to call on me. Yeah, and, and especially when you need faith, um, because I'm really good at um, lifting up your spirits. And he's showing me, like, with the Wham song, for example, you know, he can throw on some music in your in your mind. Also, he can communicate that way, like, with uh, songs in your head through, with the help of Archangel Sandalfin, who is the Archangel of Music, who I recently did a Q&A with um, that should be on my channel if you're looking to get to know the archangels better i have a series with the archangels and the next video i plan to do is with archangel faith um so look for that and yeah any any last words um just be yourself tune like like dance to the beat of your own drum don't don't care what anybody thinks or who's watching you you know, like nobody's really watching you, he's saying. Everybody's fixated on themselves, you know, um, and that's really how it should be. 
it's different when you're in the public eye because people are watching you in a sense and it does feel different as a famous person but generally speaking like um, unless you're really in the public eye nobody's watching you nobody's like taking notes um, on, on your every move and behavior so don't don't like judge yourself so harshly he's like cuz cuz you're gonna be your own worst critic he's saying and when you start judging yourself you kind of start attracting like negative um, energy in and you become an open portal he's saying or conduit he's saying for for like negative for vultures to kind of come in and, and feed off of you and that's pretty graphic he's saying but that's that's basically what it was like for me it's like I had this this open wound and um, you know the vultures came in and, and fed and, and and had kind of like a last laugh so to speak but um, I truly had the last laugh being in heaven because now I see things clearly and, and I and I know the truth in, in everything and and why things were the way they were in my life but um, he's like generally I'm happy and he's uh, referring to a question that I didn't ask but it's uh, he's putting it in my head because um, I was going to ask and leave on this question is um, do you have any last messages for your fans or what would you like your fans to know and he's like just like that just that that I that I had the last laugh that I had I've gained the knowledge I'm happy here he's saying I'm happy where I'm at I don't regret leaving earth I don't want there to be too much sadness or I don't want you to focus on the sadness or quality of my life um, but just the beautiful moments that I did have and share with my lover that I was truly um, that I met my twin flame that I had this beautiful uh, um, experience on earth that many people don't don't get to have he's saying although many people hopefully will um, in in the future because of the twin flame energy portals and the 222 and all these activations that are kind of drawing these twin flames to unite he's saying that that's going to be one of the experiences that more people will have um, than 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 people were having at the time he was alive so he was very lucky at that time in history to to have met his match his his twin in in, in the human flesh in that sense and have that experience on earth so he feels like that was the greatest gift a god really gave him in his life as george michael um that kind of shined above all of the um, kind of bullshit he's saying that he had to put up with <laughs> So, um, yeah, he's just saying just, um, yeah, no, I'm happy, you know, no, I'm happy and I'm at peace and, um, no regrets. And, um, I learned, I learned the lessons that I needed to learn and it, it was my time to go and it wasn't, um, like there was no foul play in, in, in his death. It was more just a, a lonely heart, like a broken heart, like he was missing his, his match and he was kind of being called home and so he felt like it was time to leave and his mission was complete in that sense so yeah don't be sad um, just connect to his songs and the happy songs um, and the soulful songs that he left and the legacy he left behind the positive aspects of his life and just him knowing the truth of, of who he was and who he shared in this video is really what he wants you to tune into when you tune into his vibration and the um, the song you've got to have faith is really a good emblem for um, that that chorus specifically for how he wants to lift you up you know and, and, and change your mood if you're if you're feeling down and depressed or uncertain about the outcome of something play that song to bring his energy in um, which was another question I forgot to ask how do we call on you how can we call you in yeah play that song you've got to have faith and recognize anytime you hear lyrics in your head that are that are from me as a sign that I'm there and yeah any last words or well that was your last words I think so I'll just ask to wrap it up um, yeah, how did you how do you feel about this interview? 
He's like, it was great. Thank you. Um, you know, it's, it was a pleasure just, just as expected. Um, you know, it was an honor to be here and to share my story in this way and to be with good friends and to have a good laugh and to, um, express myself. Um, being given the opportunity and the dignity to express myself and um, my true words, not the words that, you know, somebody who wasn't um, being true to the source, like uh, a media reporter would, would write, but the, the actual truth, the actual reality that's being, been shared here today is the truth, is the real truth that you can trust and connect to my vibration with, the true essence of my vibration and who I truly am as a being of light and light worker. So, and then I feel like him kind of saying that's all. Thank you. He's kind of like um, doing a little bow and thank you so much, George. I really appreciate you stepping forward and uh, giving me so much information, um, being willing to answer so many questions and share so many deep deep aspects to yourself um, and uh, messages for us as a community and collective. And yeah, I'm getting a little bit tired. I'm just kind of, I'm at the end of my day and it's been a little bit of a long day today. So I'm not gonna take too long in here. Just please uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can know when more content is released. Um, I do plan on bringing forward new uh, celebrity guides in the future, so continue to look out for uh, messages like these from, from different guides. And um, yeah, thank you for all of your support and love you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>